It's easy to look at a professional piece of diffusion and assume that you can achieve the same results by just affixing a bunch of wood together. But what looks like a bunch of scrap wood glued together is actually a carefully calculated series of wells that are designed to scatter sound evenly at a specific frequency range. You might have found this out the hard way if you've ever tried to DIY a Skyline style diffuser. On top of the painstaking process of affixing all the blocks together, it's also necessary that your sequence be carefully calculated to scatter sound evenly and not cause other acoustic issues. This is also true for other common DIY options such as using egg cartons, bookcases, or other furniture as acoustic treatment. Books themselves would do more to absorb sound than reflect or scatter it, and the random depths from a bookcase won't come close to producing the effects of a carefully measured and calculated piece of diffusion. Unfortunately, not all panels that are marketed as diffusers properly scatter sound, so whatever panel you end up going with, make sure that it was actually engineered to scatter sound properly. Even if you do have an effective piece of diffusion, not placing it properly or using it in the wrong application isn't going to give you the effect you're looking for. Just like with bass traps, there's a minimum amount of panels you'll need to hear a noticeable effect. Just throwing up a few pieces of diffusion isn't going to cut it. Different types of diffusion are more finicky about placement than others, but regardless, you'll need a dedicated strategy for adding diffusion to your room if you want the best results. Dedicated diffusers mostly only work in your mid-ranges, between 500 and 1000 Hz, with some models working up to 2000 to 5000 Hz. It's common to see people use too much diffusion in small rooms where bass trapping should be a priority. Combination absorption and diffusion panels, such as the Alpha and Impression series, can help you strike a balance in these situations, but your first priority in any room should be bass control. Some types of diffusion require a certain amount of space for the sound to scatter. This doesn't completely rule out diffusion from being used in small rooms, but it does limit where in the room they'll be most effective. Diffusion also works best when the sound is aimed directly at the panel. This is why the back wall is a good place to start adding diffusion into your room. You might have heard it said that diffusion can make a room sound larger. It's a point we've made on this channel, and while it is true, it's important to note that diffusion does not add reverb time into the room. You're not going to be able to make a small bedroom sound like a cavernous auditorium just by adding a bunch of diffusion. But this is actually a good thing. If diffusion added reverb time into the room, then those lingering reflections would mess with whatever original sound you're trying to mix or produce. Instead, diffusion tricks your brain into not being able to localize the reflections, making the size of the room less obvious to the ears. Diffusion can be a tricky endeavor, so if you need help with your diffusion strategy or just have general questions about acoustics, visit us on our website, where you can find tons of useful tools, articles, and videos, as well as a free consultation form to help you get the most out of your acoustics. Get free acoustic advice. Visit GIKAcoustics.com for educational articles and tutorials.